All right, everybody. Well, we had some uh, tech issues, so hopefully you can see us and hear us. If not, we're recording it and we will post it. So, Christine, I would love to have you kick us off with your introduction, and then we'll get into um, some kind of a interview style questions back and forth. Um, I think is the best way for us to shake this out today. So, tell tell people about yourself. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. I'm so excited yeah. to be here. So I am Christine Bobet. I am a style expert, and my goal is to help women reinvent themselves through their style. So if you're rebranding your career, your business, whatever that next chapter of this career is, how is your wardrobe going to be aligned with who you are becoming? And my goal is to focus on your wardrobe, to hear where you want to go, the person you want to become, how do you want to show up on stage on your work presentations? How do you want to show up and what clothes are going to be aligned with that personality that you step into? And that's my job is to create a whole wardrobe designed on your energy and the person that you are becoming. I love that. I love that. So where are you located? I'm in Stanford, Connecticut. I'm about an hour outside of New York city. Okay. Awesome. And you work with people, um, like in person, virtually, you could kind of meet people wherever they're yep. they're at from I that perspective. We do it from you know the U uh, to, from Connecticut to California to Paris to all over. Love it, love it. So I was super excited to meet you um, a couple of weeks ago. We're both part of a, a kind of a networking group, and um, you know we really were looking at how can we align the things that we do, and so. I'm a branding and marketing expert, and we help businesses of all sizes. Um, and I, when I say all sizes, I mean solopreneurs on up to organizations that have 300 plus employees um, in the Midwest, across the US, and even into Canada. And so, um, you know, when I was looking at kind of how we can blend both of our worlds, I mean, it really is about style and strategy, and we're we're talking about both of them today. So, um, tell me a little bit about how fashion and um, business can work together to really create a cohesive personal brand from your perspective or business brand even. Yeah, you know, when we are looking to step into a new chapter of our career, I've changed my career from teacher to corporate world to starting my own business. And when I think back to those changes, I realize that it's an energetic change that's really a big part of what you're doing. And I know for me, when I was unhappy being a speech teacher, and then I was on this quest to figure out what was going to make me happy, I didn't realize how much inner work that was involved. Mm -hmm. And when you have been working in a particular, especially I hear this a lot from women who've been working in corporate and they leave to start their own business, and yeah. they'll always tell me, oh, I have a closet full of suits that I'm never going to wear again. And that closet full of suits really represents the old person that you were. And I want to say old person, but the old energy that you were. Yes. So now you have to sit here and say, well, you left corporate because it was all of these things that you didn't like. And now we're looking to move forward to be maybe a business owner or you're stepping up on a leadership role or to another company. You want different things to happen there. Absolutely. What is the energy that we need to leave behind the old patterns, the old mindset, mm -hmm. the old belief system and our clothes and our style is part of leaving that behind. So it's letting Absolutely. go. Of the old. And then you've got to look at your new business, your new career, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And you got to say, what is that person and that energy I need to become? So a lot of times mm -hmm. if you're stepping up a role and you're becoming a leader or a bigger brand, you need more power in that role. So what are the clothes that are going to re represent that almost Wonder Woman look that you need to create? Uh, so funny that you just said Wonder Woman because I immediately thought of the power pose, you know, when they say when yeah. you're getting backed up to go on stage, um, you know, whatever that looks like. And it's amazing to me, um, you know, when I think of even our um, industry. So, you know, we're creative and um, a little bit more, it's kind of depending on, you know, even who we're working with, but a little more casual, I would say, you know, I, I've worked in both um, agencies and then internally where you talk about the business suits. When I had to wear those, I never felt like myself. Now, give me a blazer, a super cute tank top, jeans and heels. 
that's me, but <laughs> a suit from head to toe, <laughs> navy, black, whatever that looks like, that is not me. So how do you think that um, like appearance and ultimately, I mean, it's your brand as an individual, but you know, for you and I, even as business owners, it represents our brand in totality, how we, how we show up, how we look. And I say how we think, smell, feel, taste, whatever, all of that plays a huge role in our brand and how, how people perceive us. And so um, how do you think that your appearance can like influence or affect things, especially from a personal, uh, excuse me, a professional setting like a business setting? So I always like to talk to my clients and say, what is the energy, the environment that you're going into? So there's a different energy for a talk of, you know, 5,000 people on a stage, especially like a TED talk energy to mm -hmm. doing a talk to a luncheon of a group of women. There is a different energy when you might just be working from home, but when you need to be in the office and presenting, there's a different energy. So first, what is the energy? What's the environment I'm going into? And then what clothes are going to align with that? Because we want our clothes to always complement our body type. Always. That's my yeah. biggest thing is that I don't like women to look frumpy. So there's a lot of these looks out there where they're, everything's squared off and it just doesn't really complement any woman's body. But you want to look at the texture and the color, and there's always a way to present yourself and to wear the right things that represent your brand, your style, and you. But it takes a little bit of time and effort to think about what it is that I want for this event, what it is I want for that event, because sometimes you have to be more business casual, more business formal, and that's much different from when you're working at home where you can be on video and throw a different top on and the energy of what you're looking, especially on your branding photos in your website. Absolutely. You know that there's a lot going yeah, on. Sure. And you know that I've seen pictures that were meant for some other piece of marketing that somebody grabbed in the wrong file and threw it into a post. And I'm like, that picture doesn't go because it doesn't make sense with exactly. everything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. There, there's, it's about the energy, where it's going and what it's going to be part of is so important to be planning your wardrobe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we did a brand photo shoot, um, well, probably almost a year ago now at this point. And it, it's just so interesting because especially when you have a team, you know, you're talking about body shapes. We all have different body shapes. We all have, um, you know, different kind of styles, you know, too, from that perspective, uh, what we feel good in, what we don't feel good in. And so, um, you know, just kind of really coming at it from that perspective, too. I mean, what tips do you have when you're looking at not only just you as an individual, but when you're trying to kind of dress your team for a photo shoot while allowing them to be authentic, but ultimately representing your brand? I always think color is the easiest way to coordinate those pictures. Mm -hmm. So there's a right color combination to work for the whole team. Yeah. But it is true, like you want to complement everybody's body type and make sure that they understand. I think the biggest thing, especially if you have people who are not always getting uh, dressed up, mm -hmm. you kind of got to prepare them for that. You've got to right. kind of sit them down and say, this is what's happening in two weeks and three weeks because I've seen women show up when I worked in retail an hour before closing and, you know, we've got to get all these pieces together. Yes. And I think the component is the preparation. So it's the preparation to look at what's your brand, what are the colors, and then people coming in and saying, well, I'm a, you know, pants girl and I'm the dress girl and I'm the skirt girl. Yeah. So how do we coordinate that? And we need to listen but it's the preparation that's going to make the biggest difference and that this doesn't happen two days before the event. Yeah, that's absolutely. Where, where it's always <laughs> where everything goes wrong. Yes. Well, and so I lied, actually. I, well, I was thinking of a, a previous brand photo shoot and we actually just had one a few weeks ago and we did um, color coordination to our brand colors. So yeah. we all were, you know, wearing our own, our own things and our own styles, but definitely we're on brand from a color palette perspective. But I love the um, conversation around preparation because um, I thought that was so interesting when you and I chatted the first time about how far in advance you really should be thinking um, about your wardrobe, just how you, I mean, feel, look, all of that, you know, you talked about if you're wanting to get your hair done or whatever that looks like. So tell me a little bit about that timeline that you prefer and think works best for um, clients to 
just move forward successfully. My ideal timeline would be 90 days out. And you're like, wow, that's a lot. Why? Well, let's break this down. Number one, if you're looking to do any type of cosmetic treatments, whatever you choose, you need to know what the time recovery is for any of that stuff. And a lot of times, okay. sometimes you need to do certain procedures, even if it's the eyebrows or the lashes or whatever you do, you might need to do them three or four times before you actually see results. Right. So sometimes people don't think about that. They don't think about um, their hair, the, the coloring, if they're dyeing their, their grays, if they're you know getting it blown out or treatments to the hair, you wanna make sure you're timing it because if you're um, coloring your hair every four weeks, and all of a sudden you realize, oh no, I'm doing it two weeks before yeah. the usual time. Now you have a little bit of a problem. So lots of um, medical or any kind of skincare stuff takes longer than most people realize. Yes, the second absolutely. thing is the earlier you shop, inventory is much better because we have time to order things. If you come in two weeks before your photo shoot and you're wanting me to help you find things, and we've got to order stuff and you're getting stuff, you know, things go wrong. I've yeah, seen yeah. it. Before. <laughs> I've yeah. been there for events where I have about 17 dresses lined up. I'm like, oh, okay. None of these are working for me. All the time. And, you know, I think why I'm so passionate to go back to this kind of work was when I worked in retail was I could never get into the closet and see what was yes. already there. So somebody was in the store complaining to me that this wasn't working. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I know there's an outfit at home. So this work, I get to go into the closet, but stores, they might sell out of things, but what people don't realize is that people are buying two or three pieces because they're going to try them on and then those items will come back. Right. So what happens is if you wait and you're saying, oh, it's sold out, it might come back because it, what, they bought two, two sizes, one size is coming yes. back. Yes. We can still get it. But if it's got two days or a week before, I don't have time to get that piece for you. Right. So the options, the the places to go, if we need to get things altered, a lot of times my yep. clients need to get things altered. Again, if you're rushing someone to do a job and it is kind of very detailed, they're right. not going to give their best effort. So that's why 90 days is my hope. Usually 60 or 30 days, you know, we yep. can still work. Yep, Absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting when you um, to to talk about timelines because I can't even tell you how many people have you know sent me a message or whatever it is and hey, can you do a logo for me quick? I'm like, do you really want to you know approach yeah. your branding quick like a quick and dirty perspective? Um, so the the timeline obviously plays a role when we talk about just brand strategy you know, in general too, whether you're building a brand from the ground up um, or you're looking at a complete rebrand, brand refresh, whatever that looks like. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate the timeline piece that you, um, you know, that you spoke to too. So, um, so one of the things we were talking about when you're looking at your wardrobe is, you know, tying it to the color palette. So um, how do you work through color selections. And I mean, we work a lot with color psychology and what colors mean and what they represent and symbolize and all of that when we're building out brands for people. But I know the same things go for clothing. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. So with color, it's interesting. There's so many approaches to it. There's, you know, lots of women who, who do the, the coloring and everything. I look at a couple things first. I want to know what excites you, what colors are exciting you, and what do they mean to you first? Because energetically, I want to hear what's going on for you because I don't want to try to convince anyone to work on a color that they don't like. Yep. But say, oh, well, it's a better color because of your brand. So, you know, we want to think about things about what's exciting you and what does your brand mean? What does it symbolize? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I like to have more color because I think you never want to be, I want to work with clients who want to stand out and yes, not blend in. Yep. And if you ever see a lot of TED Talks, they're usually dark and they're usually low lighting. Mm -hmm. And now they have that red sign behind them. But if you wear black and you blend into that curtain, nobody really gets to see you. Yes. So I want to think about how do we make you stand out in the right way? Not that I'm not mm -hmm. saying that everyone's like wearing hot pink or red. 
Right. You know, in feng shui, red was a very auspicious good luck color. And people were like, oh, I'll just put a lot of red here. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> too much red can bring on anger and frustration. Right. But what you want to think about is what do those colors mean to you? How do they light you up? And then how well do they coordinate? Because, you know, with your branding. So if you do choose these colors, I want to know, is your wardrobe going to be, you know, blending in because, you know, right. you're doing tons of photo shoots and you might be like, oh, well, I, I really don't like that color. I like this one, but your branding on your website, it's going to clash. So absolutely you know really what it is you like and how we can keep up with them. Not a trendy color because you don't want to be like, oh, in six months, I don't like this anymore and coming back and wanting to redo everything. Yes, yep, absolutely. Well, and that's the thing too. I mean, branding from our perspective, we know that's an investment for people, a super important one. And same thing with you. I mean, when you think about clothing and the time that it takes, and I mean, if they're doing those additional, um, you know, kind of cosmetic things too, it's, it's all an investment of time and money. And so we want to make sure that we're doing it right you know, the first time too. So you talked a little bit about um, kind of the, what things are you liking and how are you feeling? Let's talk a little bit about um, how your wardrobe can really amp up your confidence and then also aligning that with your professional goals. So think about certain textures. Certain people want to wear a particular style shoe because that's what makes them feel empowered. You'll see that classic, um, the red, you know, Louis Vuitton shoes yeah, yeah. that many women wear. And why do they wear them? Because it gives them a power. Now that's just for some women. Yes. It could be your favorite scarf. It could be a particular pair of earrings. It could just be, you want to wear the brand. You want to wear Chanel or you want to wear Gucci. That makes you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. I've heard it from all different types of styles. Yeah. They only like pants. And that's not a problem. If you only like to wear pants, mm -hmm. it works. But we got to find the right pants, the right cut, and the right fabric for your body type. And that makes you feel good. So a lot of times, it's there's a lot of questions, but sometimes people limit their mindset. And they say, well, Christine, I'm not going to wear anything but this. And I'm like, well, let's take that. I can take anything and make it look elevated. Right. And so the key is what feels good on you, what works for your body type, what fabrics do you prefer, and what is it that makes you feel powerful? The ring, the earring, the dress. Yes. What is it? Because everybody's very different. Absolutely. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, like you talk about too, I mean, obviously in our world, we, we love brand loyalty, but <laughs> when you're talking about clothing, that doesn't always work either because I mean, sizing is so different. I mean, that is one hurdle that I constantly, you know, am facing even when I'm shopping online. It's like, okay, I might be a small in this brand and then all of a sudden I'm in, you know, double XL in this one. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, you know, from that standpoint too. So I think when you're looking at, you know, body types and just, I mean, what we look like, how we, you know, carry our, our weight and it's like chest size, thigh size. I mean, I think of all of those things that um, really leaning on someone like you is so important because you're looking at it from a way larger view and obviously have access to a lot more things that people might not even think of. I just happened to see your, um, was it sunglasses brand that you came across this morning too? So I, no, <laughs> that, I, I, I have started to following them. What I have to, I, my Instagram is really more like a Vogue magazine where I need to keep yep. up with new brands because clients will say to me, I want a blue dress, uh, this length sleeve, this long. And I'm like, okay, I have to have that inventory in my head. So that's why I'm always on the hunt for new things. But you mentioned one thing, Amanda, that I want to share on here because understand that brands there is no size six that across the board every brand follows mm -hmm. they create their own the problem is is it's where it's manufactured so some brands okay. will manufacture in china who and i don't know some brands that manufacture in china cut smaller some in india cut bigger so many brands can bring, and I've seen this happen, I've worked mm -hmm. in the retail and I've seen happen where I had a pair of pants and I had every color and some would cut bigger and some would cut smaller. And it's always the manufacturer. So I always tell people, 
your number does not matter. It doesn't matter if you're six, doesn't matter if you're large, it's not consistent yep. across the board. So right. never take that personally and never walk out of a store frustrated because you might have had to go up a size. It's the cut, it's the material, it's the manufacturer they use. And it's so important because women get so sensitive to the sizing and it means nothing. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I even think of when I was looking for wedding dresses, I'm like, why yeah. would you, you know, I mean, this is the day that I want to be the most confident and I'm having to go up for up, whatever, you know, four sizes to make it fit me. So yeah, I, I love that you um, educated everyone who's watching on that um, because I didn't even know that myself. I mean, I, you know, you can kind of think that obviously different designers um, are even having within, different cuts and sizes, but like I said, where it's produced. But um, even within a brand. Amazing. So yeah, even yeah. like, I don't want to call out any brands, yeah, 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 even yeah. one brand is using, because especially since of COVID, they're using yeah. multiple sources. And if that manufacturer can't do it fast enough, they're going to go to the other one, which means that those same pair of pants that were done in a Navy, but the olive and the, the teal went to the other manufacturer. So if you ever have a salesperson that says to you, please try all the colors on. And you're like, no, that's so silly. Yes. This salesperson is very smart and knows that they're not all the same. I love it. Okay. So we talked a little bit about confidence, how we can boost that and really um, just amping up your professional presence. What are some common fashion mistakes that you think um, people should for sure avoid um, from a business perspective? They shop too late. <laughs> they, they just, they wait to the last minute. And a lot of times they're waiting for the last minute because they somehow think in a couple of weeks that they're going to lose weight, yet they don't have a plan to lose weight. All right. Don't buy, if it is too tight, don't buy it. Just go yeah. up a size and have it taken in. Mm -hmm. Because you can't do anything when it's too tight. Just go up. You don't want to sit in the car. You know, you put those pants on. They were great for standing, but you sit in the car and it's like digging into your stomach and you've got this hour drive and it's not comfortable because right. you, you, you try to sleep. feel better about cramming yourself into <laughs> <laughs> to a so, smaller size. If it's too tight, go up the size because it's yeah. easier to take it in. And most of all, don't deprive yourself of limiting beliefs that. Uh, that will not look good on me if you never tried it on. Yeah, absolutely. It's always like, let's just give it a try. I want to see, I, I like it when a client, especially when they're trying on things and it's on order and we're doing a virtual one. And I'm like, yes. I still want you to show it to me because I still need to see if maybe this was what's working and we had to change the size or right. something. So don't give up too soon and don't, walk into a store and say, I know what doesn't work for me because you're coming in with a limited belief and the salesperson can't help you because you've got a wall up. Yeah. Absolutely. So your body's always evolving and be open and willing to try some new things on because until you try it on, you'll never know if that really works for you. Mm -hmm. No, I would agree. And I, I've experienced that too. I've seen something on a hanger or a mannequin or whatever. And um, you know, obviously mannequins are very yes, small yes. and don't have much shape to them. So it's a very hard to even, you know, compare. But um, so we talked a little bit about mistakes too. So how do you think we should adapt our personal style to different professional settings? So, and I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, my, my experience too. And so um, one of the things I definitely like to meet, you know, clients where they're at and also, I know that I likely won't present um, as my best self or present my business as such if I am uncomfortable. So I naturally would not wear a full blown business suit and haven't actually since I started my own business when I'm meeting even with a potential client because I do want to represent myself myself authentically. I want to represent our business authentically um, because we were a little, like I said, a little more creative, a little more casual um, than maybe if we're working with a legal, you know, law office or a bank, bank, whatever that looks like. So tell me kind of how to play in that space when you want to, I mean, be confident in what you're wearing and yet who you're meeting with or whatever that looks like may not 
look anything like that or dress anything like that. And that's not their brand. It's such a good question because there's so many things. So I think ahead of time, if you're looking at a client, you know, go into the website, kind of look at what their they present in what their current business is. And, you know, Lots of times, even like if you go to a networking event, you'll see business casual, you'll see business formal, mm -hmm. you'll see those kind of attires. And a lot of times they'll say business casual and they'll say something like, hey, you know, we're going to take a lot of pictures. So please feel comfortable in how you're dressing. But what I think the most important part is if you wanted to wear jeans, always go for a darker wash. Mm -hmm. It is more elegant. It is more polished. It is more okay in a business casual environment. Leave the ripped jeans at home for mm -hmm. date night and all that stuff. The blazers, the cut of a blazer, the way it falls on your body type can have a different energy. So if you need to be more polished and this is a high six figure like deal that you're working on, mm -hmm. polish it up. You want more refined, you want more elegance, you want more, you wear the pants with that because yes. that's about money and you want to feel elevated. If this is a real casual kind of energy, then I would say a little bit more of a refined pant, like a denim, like a colored denim would work really mm -hmm. well with a blazer or the blouse. I mean, blouses are great too. All right. But it's the texture, it's the color. But think of what the transaction is going to evolve. The higher the price point, the more you want to show up in alignment with six figures. Right. And if it's, you know, smaller price points, then think about how that energy of those clothes shine up, shine up, <laughs> line yeah. up with. Line up, yeah. If you want to walk into that, um, you know, like jewelry, like I have a couple of pieces on. These mm -hmm. have a very elegant feel to them. If you're wearing a chunkier, you know, piece, it's more like a statement. It's more, you know, they all have different mm -hmm. things. But it's the overall energy of what's the outcome that you need to feel. So if you're selling a $150,000 package, how does that feel? Yes. And what flows? Cause are you going to give a loan to somebody that's sitting there sweats in a, in a like bun and you know, like messy yes. and you're like, okay, you have no responsibility. So think right. of it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so you talk a lot about energy and I love that because I, I use a different word vibe, you know, so it's like kind of what, what, what's the vibe that you're putting out and ultimately what our goal is, I mean, from our perspective, you know, from a branding side of things, um, you know, whether it's logo color palette, we're building out print, you know, digital assets, we're wanting that energy to be magnetic. So people are drawn into you, you know, we want our clients, customers, patients, whatever drawn to our clients. And so that's ultimately what I feel you and I are both doing is we're, we're wanting people to come to us, come to our clients um, with, you know, whatever their goals are. So like you talk about a six figure, you know, deal or package or, or getting that loan to elevate your business or the next career move, whatever that looks like, it, it is about energy, magnetism, the vibe, you know, that you're putting out. Um, even you talk about hair, it's, you know, is it, pulled up? Is it messy? Is it put together? You know, all of those things. And it's so funny because I mean, I don't, I don't think men probably think this much about it. I know. They, <laughs> I know do. That. they uh, do. Do they? Oh my God. Okay. So maybe we should talk about that too. <laughs> I had a gentleman, um, well actually, um, you know, Bob Proctor, I don't know if you're familiar with him, yeah. but he talked about that too, about how he started wearing power suits and how it was so important to him. But I had a gentleman um, on one of my posts talk about how he hated wearing suits, mm -hmm. but his signature thing was the vest. So, you know, the vest that um, are actually popular for women right now. Yeah. He started wearing his vest and a button down um, uh, shirt. And now that became his signature look. And he's okay. like, when I put that vest on, it's like that book, The Alter Ego by Todd Herman. Mm -hmm. It's like, celebrities who go on stages have certain things that transform them into this altered personality. Yes. And so what's happening is that vest, when he gets into it, that's his power suit. He's on. And that's like, you know, the, the vests are very popular for women and there's all styles and all ways you can wear it. And it's just that powerful piece that could make you change your energy. Right. Because 
that looks make you feel kind of how Wonder Woman would spin into her yeah. uniform. Yeah. And then she was like going to conquer the world. Absolutely. So it's, everybody has it. It could be the shoes. It could be the socks. It could be, it's the funniest thing sometimes that I hear what, what is their power? Yes. Yeah. That, that piece for them. Yeah. It's so interesting is my husband um, is the president and CEO of a heavy construction equipment company and his um i would say natural confidence and vibe is actually in a suit i mean he wears them well he invests in them um but when you look at his industry he got a lot of crap you know for that it's like okay man are you gonna go out on a job site looking like that and so you can he's gradually kind of shifted into you know it was jeans and a polo but you talk about the the vest thing that's one thing that he shifted to and we have four seasons around here so we have i would say probably a lot more wardrobe than most people do just because we have to um you know be very covered in some months and and not as much in others but so and now that you i mean we're talking about men it totally just brings me back to the, the conversations with my husband and you know where i can see him too even being the most confident or having a little bit of extra like swag you know when he's walking into a room or swagger excuse me when he's walking into a room so i love that um so one of the things i want to touch on for sure is um, what are like actionable steps obviously you know we're coming at this um wanting to work with people but you know not, people aren't always ready um you know for the investment and so we totally understand that and always still want to provide um value when we're doing these types of things so what are some action steps from um, a wardrobe standpoint, or even maybe just color selections, whatever kind of quick tips would you give to people to start somewhere? Okay, so my first question I always start with any client is, who are your style icons? Who Ooh. is it? And a lot of times, right. who are your mentors? Who are the people that you're looking up to? And they'll be sending me pictures of them because I wanna see what they're liking about them. Okay. So I like to use Instagram because if you're not aware that Instagram, you can save um, pictures and then yes. you can create folders and now they actually even allow you to share those folders and you could do it on Pinterest too. I yeah. just find Instagram is a little different energy, but start saving them. So your fall wish list, your fall um, events coming up, things that you want, start putting them into those folders. Mm -hmm. You know, you just click that little save button, that little um, thing that saves it, put it yep. in there because what happens is you can go back and you can start to see the theme that you're liking. So if I've already oh, got God. eight or nine pictures in there, I know what, what am I drawn to? I'm drawn to this kind of cut. I'm drawn to this color. I'm drawn to the pattern dresses. I'm going to a more boho look. I'm going to a more mm -hmm. chic look. And that is what's going to give you the plan. Because if oh, you God. show up without a plan, you end up spending and wasting a lot of money and time that gets donated every you know season cleaning it out. Oh yes. That's the place to just start. I love that. So it's so interesting too that you say that because I think of kind of our initial questionnaire, you know, that we send or talk through um, you know, with clients once they sign on with us. And a lot of it again is you know kind of what's your what's your favorite or who are you following um you know even from a brand perspective it's you know who are your competitors that are out there or businesses like yours or even not like yours where you love their brands where you're drawn to their brands and then digging into the why behind that so similar to you it's like do if you can do some of that legwork and start seeing those i mean really visual themes of what you are drawn to and what you you know think will help you. I mean, we really are coming from kind of that same strategic approach, you know, or those like action steps, uh, which is so interesting because I mean, you know, obviously your fashion and we're, you know, like business well, or anything from that standpoint. I, mean, but I love it. I can say that my my thing is always elegant, refined, and clean lines. So a lot yeah. of times with the website, I look at it. I can't stand when there's all these things going on. So yes. for me, I'm like the first thing I want to talk to someone about, I'm like, I like a clean line. I like everything, mm -hmm. you know, I want to be reading it because that's how it is. That translates into my wardrobe, into my home. I, that, that's very important to me. So a lot of times you'll hear the same patterns of the energy of your space, of the energy mm -hmm. of your wardrobe and your brand because you yeah. prefer those things. So the more consistent and aligned with it, it makes it easier that if there was a client that came to both me and you, we can just figure everything out so fast. Yes, absolutely. Here, 
And we're like, yeah, we get it. We, we, we can make this much faster because we're hearing the things because they're so clear on what they want. Right. Well, and I think too, I mean, the end result will obviously be better, you know, for the clients that we would be working with. And I think that's, you know, one thing when I have clients and all of a sudden they have a brand photo shoot set up and they're like, oh crap, I kind of forgot to tell you. It's like, oh man, we could, you know, I mean, we could have just planned so much better, been so much more intentional about it, knowing all of the different applications that photos too are being used. Like you said, there's, you know, website that has a different, you know, it's like typically those are on a horizontal landscape, not as much vertical, but also we want to be looking at in our world stories, reels, which is on the vertical, you know? And so, I mean, even if, Hey, can we crop in this photo? Can we not, how do we use it? And so, I mean, just really leaning into the expertise, you know, too, of, of people like you and I, I think is so important, even if it's just, you know, whatever, an hour of time where we can help you navigate it a heck of a lot quicker. Um, again, the results are going to be a lot more impactful and on point and smartly invested, I would say, you know, too, from that standpoint. So you talked about Instagram. I love that. I did not know that that was even a thing. So I'm going to start <laughs> using that. That's very cool. And I mean, I'm on Instagram, but um, I typically am purchasing things, unfortunately, <laughs> and then returning them too, because I'm, I'm a, like, oh, I need to get this in three sizes and hopefully they have free shipping back and all that stuff. So, um, and my team actually has uh, benefited from me doing that because I will forget return windows. And then I have clothes sitting there and like, ah, here you go. <laughs> When I work with virtually, I always put it on the list. I'm like, okay, you have to get this back in, you know, so many days. Like I just say, it's like, try it on, put it right back there and um, hit it out the door. Yeah. It sounds like I need you in my life too, for (laughs) for that and um, some, some branding advice too. So what other resources or tools um, could the, you know, just common person use that um, you tap into for services or a starting point again? I think um, I think that the most important thing is to not limit your mindset. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to what you're saying, because people will say, "I can never go and shop in that store," and you never know what that store has. Yes, sometimes right. in the front store, their mannequins all look like this, but there yeah. could probably be that dress for you. And I find it for clients all the time. So I think the starting point is is being able to go to more stores and open up to see what they might have because they might have the white top that you've been wanting for so right. long. So I think the the biggest thing is catching yourself and stop saying I hate shopping, I hate clothes, I hate getting dressed because mm-hmm. all of those things makes it really hard for you to find anything when there yeah. are tons of stores out there. There are solutions. I'm constantly buying them there every day for clients. Yes. But um, that blocks you from finding a solution. Right. And that is part of the process. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's so interesting. I'm sure there's a lot of just like online random resources that people can get. I'm going to call it like fashion advice from, you know, cheaper, whatever, quicker options. We experience the same all the time with AI and all all of those things that are out there, the cheaper, quicker, faster versions. But one of the things that I really, I mean, just like love about you and I and how we work and what, you know, what I know of you already in this short time frame is that we are truly getting to know the person, the business, you know, whatever that is coming at it from that totally human space and being direct in our communication to have the best end result too. You know, you're not gonna get that that real feedback when you're using kind of those other tools, which I think there's a time and a place for all of that. But I don't feel like in our world, when we're really looking at building out our businesses or expanding our careers or, you know, getting those six figure deals, that that's not what we need to rely on for those um, big moves in our lives, so. You know, it, it made me think of one thing, it's like, be wise with how you spend your money. Don't spend $500 on a tank top. A tank top, please go to Zara. Zara, yeah. and I'll see if you can get your tank tops for yeah. $10, $8. That's yeah. not a problem because those are things that are usually under under your jackets. 
But right. if you wanted to invest in a hundred dollar nice blazer that would last four or five seasons, mm -hmm. that's where you put your money. And I think for both of our services, it's like, yeah, you can go on AI or you can listen to an influencer tell you that to buy this dress mm -hmm. on, you know, Amazon that she's never washed. She doesn't know how long it's going to last. She put it on. She made it. You know, I've seen it. I've seen how yes. you oh, same. Yeah. Up, <laughs> steam it up, make it yeah. look good. You know, when I worked in retail, I would see the what was coming and we'd get the pictures. But when the yes. product got into the store and then it started being tried on by clients, let me tell you, that outfit no longer looked as amazing as it was because yes. of the quality it came through. So we both can save time, money, and energy from wasting your time on doing things, especially with the photo shoot, which maybe we should do a part two on. I know. It's kind of thinking. Thinking. <laughs> the photo shoot thing would be so valuable for women because you're spending $3,000 on this package. But mm -hmm. like you said, there's the pictures for the website and then there's the pictures for your posts. Yep. And putting Absolutely. those together is a whole big thing. And you don't want to be wasting sure. any more money. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And I just think of, I mean, you know, we do social media management for a lot of clients. And I mean, even Meta has two different timelines, taxes for Instagram and Facebook. We're like, oh, can we, you know, get some consistency? But, you know, that's where we're coming at it from is application in all of the places, you know, that everything could live. And so that, I mean, I just, yes, again, we're looking at a, at, at a much bigger scale than, okay, I have this shoot and I need to kind of get through it so I can get some pictures up and, and done and done. So, okay. Any other kind of tidbits, takeaways that you um, want to share before we hop off here? Um, as long as our technology worked like it was supposed we're, to. We're, we're so happy about I know, this. I know. <laughs> Hopefully it reported, you know, and we can um, get that posted up too. So, and I'm excited. I think we need to do a part two um, as well. So let's, let's get that on the docket. Yeah. I think um, if you want to know more, I have a workshop that I have done for the spring that could go more into understanding how to pick out your energy. If you go to my website, www.christinebovet.com, then you can sign up for that um, workshop and watch that video, which gives you more examples. Unfortunately, we can't pull up any. Right, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd love to show you more what they mean. But and I also have blogs on there where you can go on and see where I have more descriptions on outfits and helping you really see what's the energy of these pants and these outfits. So you can visit me at www.christinebovet or follow me here on LinkedIn or Instagram. Love it. Yeah. So follow us on um, LinkedIn for sure. I mean, you likely are if you're here, which is awesome, <laughs> or you, someone shared it, which we, we really appreciate. Uh, you can find us at mintbrandmarketing.com. We have a lot of great blog posts um, around brand strategy, um, kind of the definition definitions too in our world, because there is marketing, advertising, PR, blah, 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 this big ball that people don't necessarily understand. So we're always here to help and educate um, and, and, you know, just do the dang thing. So Christine, thank you so much. This was awesome. I appreciate you and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye right. everyone. Take care.